okay? We need to confess to the world that, that Jesus is real. I'm thinking of this phrase where in John 3.16, we're told that we need to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, but this adds a new phrase. We have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. What, what does that mean, to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? Al? Okay. Uh, Terry, were you, did you have a comment? Okay. But, but what does it mean to say that Jesus is Lord? Okay. He's, he's equal with God. Okay. 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 Lord means ruler. Uh, when you think of medieval times, they called the king Lord, didn't they? In like old England. What did, how did they treat the, their Lord, the king? They gave him respect. They would bow down before him and pledge their loyalty to him. What happened when the king gave a command? They would, they would obey it. Yes. Okay. He, he's Lord over all. Everything was made through him. Uh, in, uh, in the book of Revelation, we're told that he is Lord of lords and King of kings. What, do, what does that phrase mean, that he's Lord of lords and King of kings? Yes. Okay, he's equal with God. Yeah, Philippians says he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. But after he was raised, he was glorified once again. Yes. There is none higher. Okay, we have other lords and rulers in this life, don't we? That we have presidents and we have kings and we have all kinds of people in authority. But, but when it says that he's lord of lords and king of kings, his authority trumps all other authorities. And so if there's a conflict between what an earthly lord or earthly ruler is telling you, with what Christ tells you, then who do we go with? Go with Christ. Terry?
okay? So as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar was, he was just God's servant. And uh, I like a lot of our former presidents who had a humble attitude toward God and, and considered themselves servants of God. Yes? Okay. That's right. Okay, even a president needs to be humble and give credit to God. Okay, that's very good. Good illustration. We are all servants of God. He's our Lord. He's the Lord of Lords. And, and that has consequences. Um, look at Luke chapter 6. Uh, we're going to look at Luke chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 46. This is Jesus speaking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug, up, who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who builds a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Jesus is saying it's inconsistent. It doesn't make sense to call me Lord, Lord, and then not do what I say. So, so when, when uh, the Bible says that we need to believe that Jesus is Lord, that means that we pledge our lives to serve him. Ben? Okay. Okay. Ben saying that we just need to obey God whether we understand what he's doing or not. And uh, we just need to, to obey him. Okay. Okay. That's right. You don't you don't argue with the, the king of England and, and say, uh, I don't understand why you're telling me to do this, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yes. That's right. The Bible teaches that God's thoughts are way above our thoughts. And there's no way we, we can understand them. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians says that uh, 
wisdom of man is foolishness to God. So, so we just need to trust him. Okay, so we need to believe that God exists. We need to believe that he's the creator of the universe, including us. We need to believe that his, in Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God and that he is our Lord, which means that we need to obey the things that he teaches us. But that's not the end of it. Um, turn, to, turn to Luke chapter 24. And we're going to read two different sections of this chapter, uh, starting in verse 25 through 27. He said to them, this is Jesus speaking again, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them that he, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. What does Jesus want us to believe in this passage. Okay. He says that we need to believe that Moses and the prophets. That's a big chunk of the Old Testament. The first five books of the Old Testament are the books of Moses. And I forget right offhand how many prophets there were, but it's a big chunk of the Bible. And he said, 17 prophets? Okay. Okay. Um, well, let's skip down here to uh, verse 36. While they were still talking about all this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled, broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that was written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Okay, what does Christ tell them they need to believe? The law, the prophets, the Psalms. The scriptures. Uh, he's telling them that they need to believe this book. I mean, this, this entire Old Testament that that member of the church was telling me was just man's ideas, that they weren't true. All of these miracles listed there, they really happened. And that's part of our faith. That's part of what we believe as Christians. Um, look at Second uh, Timothy three. And we're going to read fourteen through seventeen. The 
This is uh, Paul writing to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have been become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. What scripture is he talking about here that Timothy had been taught from inf infancy? Okay, this is the Old Testament that he's talking about. And what did he say about the origin of, of the Old Testament? It's God-breathed. What, what does that mean, to be God-breathed? Terry? Okay. Okay. He, Yeah, this, this person I was talking about believes that, he says he believes the New Testament, or at least parts of it. But ha if you take out all the references to the Old Testament out of the New Testament, you don't have a whole lot left. Jesus. That's right. We're going to talk about how people think of Paul. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Okay. Uh, yeah, the third chapter beginning in verse 14. So this, this says that... Oh, yes, Art? We're going to look at we're going to look at that as soon as we finish with the with the Old Testament, and we're going to look at the what the Bible says about the New Testament also. Um, but this God breathed uh, it's it's explained a little bit more in Second Peter, chapter one. Let's turn over there. Um, we're going to read Second Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. <clears throat> and we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So this is directly contradicting that member of the church that I mentioned. He, he was saying that the Scriptures are man-made, that they're men's ideas, this is directly telling us that, that the Holy Spirit carried these men. as He used them as an instrument, like Terry was mentioned about the king of Babylon. He was just a servant, an instrument that God used to punish the Israelites at one time. Well, these prophets are instruments in God's hands. He uses their personality, 
their personality comes through in their writing, but he's directing them. Logan, and then Ben. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false prophets among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. So that it's possible for there to be false prophets also. Is that the point you were wanting to make? Okay. Okay. Yeah, in, in our world today, there are many false prophets. Let me go to Ben and then Al. Okay, God is active through his word. It's not just a dead thing. Yes, oh, and then, then Al. There's only one way we have to believe what the scriptures tell us. Al? That's right. They're, we're surrounded by false prophets, and, and we need to be prepared to answer them and show them these scriptures that, that uh, show what we need to believe. Yes, Terry? That's right. Without that's yeah. Well, These, these scriptures are the foundation of our faith. If without them, we're just drifting. Yes, Greg? That's right. <clears throat> After I heard that that elder made that statement that we need to put less emphasis on the scriptures, it made me curious as so I, I attended that church to see, well, if you put less emphasis on the scriptures, what do you talk about? I went to their Sunday morning Bible class, and it was all about art. They were talking about the great how art would make the world a better place through painting and, and sculpture and music. And they never mentioned the Bible one time in that class. And uh, so I guess like 
Terry was saying, if we don't have the scriptures as our foundation, we're just drifting like the rest of the world. Whatever interests us, I guess that's what we'll talk about. Yeah, an elder's job is to lead us in the right direction toward the scriptures into a deeper faith in the scriptures. Okay, so we need to believe that God exists, that he's our creator, that Jesus is his son, that Jesus is Lord of lords and king of kings. We need to believe the entire Old Testament scriptures. What about the New Testament? Um, turn to uh, Matthew 28. Yes. No. <laughs> okay, Cindy's saying that Dave Blanchard posted on Facebook. Uh, someone claiming that we can do whatever we want, basically, that we that, yeah, practice witchcraft. Okay, uh, let's look at Matthew 28, uh, beginning in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nat nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, who's Jesus speaking to here? the 11 disciples who became his apostles. And what's he telling them to do? Okay. He's telling them to teach. He expects us to listen to his apostles, doesn't he? He's giving them authority to teach them what Christ had taught them. And... Uh, so, so we need to listen to the apostles, and uh, their teaching is found in the New Testament. And uh, to back that up a little more, um, look at Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to uh, read 19 through 22 of Ephesians 2. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together 
to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Okay, what's the foundation that God's household is built on? Apostles? Okay. So he's saying that the apostles and prophets and Christ himself are the foundation of his household. Um, does that mean that this building's built on the bodies of, of uh, dead apostles? Is that what he's talking about? What, is, what does it mean that that they're the foundation. Yeah, it's it's what they teach. The the teachings of the apostles, in other words, the writings of the New Testament, are the foundation on which the church is built. Yeah, and Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone, he's the, the main thing that we're built upon. Um, we're, we're out of time, but, but uh, next week I want to talk a little bit about Paul specifically. It seems like of all the apostles, Paul is the one that's attacked the most. Um, he, yeah, he, he wrote about half the books in the New Testament. Um, and I, it was kind of interesting to me. Luke actually wrote more when you put... Luke and Acts together, they're a bigger volume than all of Paul's letters. But, uh, but Paul wrote the most letters in the New Testament. And he's not very popular with the world right now. He says, he says some things that are outrageous to today's culture. And, and so he's under attack. And, and in the church, uh, one of... One of the members of this church I'm talking about told me that we can't trust Paul because he has prejudices against women, uh, prejudices against homosexuals. Um, Paul is under attack. And and next week we'll start there and and look at what the scriptures say about Paul. And uh, so thank you for your comments this morning.